What's happening, Fish and Friends? Welcome to another episode. I'm excited because today we got an unboxing. I've got some new stuff, some strange stuff, some things that I've never got to touch before and uh, fish, and then a few things in between. So we are not wasting any time. Let's get into it. Let's start with a little top water here. Got a couple of these on the the top. Now this is a frog. This is the Tekel Honker. This is one that uh, it's not super new, but it's got these two little like metal feet back here. So when you walk it back and forth, it's supposed to click, gives some flash to it. I don't know, some of the tackle stuff I think really works. Like the sprinkler frog with like the little paddle tail deal on back, works awesome, love it. Some of these other ones not real sure about, but I've got some of them, I uh, had to complete the collection. But this, this is the new one, let me take it out. Aptly named for this little clinking apparatus on back. So they call this like a wake frog. So the tail back here doesn't rotate, so it's not like the sprinkler where this is on a swivel and goes all the way around. They said it's supposed to be like a frog wake bait. So this is waking back here, making a wake in the water. It's got a little Colorado blade down here, catching the water, kind of kicking it back and forth. The thing that I like about the Tekel frogs is they do come with good, super sharp, sticky hooks on them, as you can see, and they're already slightly pointed up. So my hookup ratio on these is usually pretty darn good. It's like the Reaction Innovation Swamp Donkey. I don't know if the same company must make them or something, but um, good body, good soft body. I don't know. I don't know about this thing though. Casting it and reel it around, you know, pads, reeds, whatever it's going to do. It's an interesting thing. More to come soon on the testing. Sticking with top water, you can see this sitting up there. Uh, I made this order tackle warehouse. It was Christmas. Shows you how behind on some of this I am. And when you did it, you got a, a three pack of Rico top waters. Now I thought this is perfect because these are like, I don't know, 20 bucks a piece. I've never used a Rico popper. I got the two sizes, the larger, and there we go. The larger one and the smaller one. The larger is almost like a Tennessee shad kind of with that brownish that's what the popping mouth looks like it's supposed to have a unique popping action uh, and people say it's the best popper out there I'm glad they gave me a little one in bone that is absolutely perfect and then a larger style walking pencil bait I've never seen these kind of reminds me of like a lucky craft gunfish uh, in a way we'll give that a go I like them uh, lots of flashy silver and pearl good colors Sticking with the top water theme, I've had these for some time, got them not too far after they came out and couldn't find them. Had no idea where to put them. This was in a, a different box of stuff I had shoved in a quarter, corner rather, not quarter. It's five inches long, weighs five eighths of an ounce. This ladies and gentlemen is the Z-Man Hellraiser. Now this thing, a bunch of talk about it when it came out at iCast. This is where you tie it. The line ties like down on the bottom. It's got this long, narrow pencil looking nose deal to it. And then the back, it's like the old Rage Blade. You remember the Strike King Rage Blade? Looks like that on there with a couple uh, treble hooks on it. Now the first thing I said when I saw this at iCast is I bet this thing is going to be a pike slayer. Other people have said that they've caught pike on it. Um, go check out Fishing with Gramps. He did a video on this. He caught some good bass on it. Um, so I've kind of heard mixed reviews. Some people say oh, I'm not wasting my time. Some people say it's kind of something cool, kind of new that uh, you know nobody else is probably really throwing. So give it a go. So this is sinking. You can see there from the back. The back is pretty heavily weighted kind of runs like this in the water and it has this weird like walking zigzaggy action to it. Got chrome for those sunnier days, cleaner water. They're chasing bait fish and shad, the old bone color. If it's overcast or nighttime, you just want to make a silhouette. I got the uh, all blacked out version. Will they catch fish or just a dumb fisherman like me? I don't know. Time will see. Okay, going subsurface. These are kind of sticking up. Berkeley, man, Berkeley had a bunch of different stuff coming out. This is one, uh, it's not super new. This was out last year. People have already done reviews on it and stuff, but the new Berkeley Power Blade Spinnerbait. This one they call Purple Rain. It's got like some white, some kind of bone to it, some silvery flash, and then of course a little bit of purple on top. Crappie, shad around here. We've got a number of fish that have purple on it. I think that's why it works so well. Now you can see the skirt's a little bit longer, the blade's a little bit longer. So if I'm running one uh, like this without a plastic, they do have a, a bait keeper on there. I like that bait keeper. If you want to use a plastic, you could, but usually when they're like this, they have like the two different um, skirt links. Uh, and the blade and the skirt go behind the hook. I usually just run a trailer hook if I can get away with it. So around um, standing timber, larger logs. And once you get into the more brushy timber and thicker stuff, um, a trailer hook can just be an absolute snag magnet. But um, if that's the case, usually I'll cut this up a little bit more and give a, a plastic on there if I'm going to run that. But I like the blades. They're not crazy overly big. I'll try to tear that apart there so you can see it. It is a hand tied skirt on there, not a rubber collar. They put the weight on the bottom of the head there. Real good, regular wire stick sharp hook wires pretty normal too not too heavy not too flimsy I think just a good overall spinnerbait size 
Now we compare that to this one. This is the half ounce. This one they call E2 Magic, so that must be Edwin Evers' color, uh, which is awesome. It's, again, that kind of translucent bone white uh, with chartreuse on there. Same thing, this half ounce has the uh, the weight on the head. And if you look at those two side by side, you can see the half ounce is a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger head. The blades on it are just a little bit bigger. So it's stepped up, which makes sense. You know, going to a little bit heavier, uh, larger spinner bait, especially if you've got dirty water, something like this with a little bit more flash and vibration. But like those colors, I just kind of got a mix of these, some three-eighths, some half-ounce. This is kind of like your coleslaw color. Oh, in fact, it is coleslaw. With the orange kicker blade, really like that one in dirty water. This one, they hit it with that sriracha. That's the hot slaw sauce. You can see it's got a little bit of red uh, on the belly there, on the eyes, kind of a blood splatter, kind of cool. And then I also got this one called Pretty One, the Pretty One, and that is a pretty one because it's like a sexy shad, which I still stand by. is a good color that still works to this day. I don't care what people say. Another couple newer spinnerbaits I grabbed from Six Cents. This is the Divine Spinnerbait. These are half ounce. Some similarities and differences from the, uh, the Berkeley version, you can see they're pretty close to the same size this is the half ounce again pretty normal size blades and I, I like that they're not you know overly huge and, and large blades of course you can swap these out but I like just kind of a, a regular do-it-all size like that about the size of my hand again it does have the hand tied thread skirt the screw on soft plastic keeper so if you like to run a soft plastic and you're kind of popping this over wood or you know through some light grass you don't have to worry about that getting pulled down the shank of the hook good sharp hook on it and it is a little bit stouter I feel like and it's a little bit bigger now I noticed when I went back and looked at the half ounce the half ounce of that Berkeley version does have a little bit bigger longer hook in it too so I didn't notice that until I looked at it but there's the two side by side you can see the Berkeley one has just a little bit bigger blade on it I can keep them steady there but both very similar what color was this this one's called shad ice so kind of that reflective with kind of see-through white and this one is blue trues flash so again kind of that sexy shad oh and it's got like that silvery flash on the bottom but i like them comment below let me know which one you think is uh is better well one more top water i had to pick up now this is the uh, the kvd sexy dog one of my all-time top two or three favorite top water walking baits but this is the saltwater series i had to pick it up because it's purple and black they call it purple chrome i call it a daggum purple beauty it's the one knocker so it's got that hard knocking sound to it. Uh, I think this will be easy to catch some fish on around here. First thing that came to mind for this, uh, for me, is nighttime. Go out and throw this at night, maybe like when there's a full moon or something. Oh my gosh, I wanna catch some fish on this. We upped on some hooks. Now something new, these are not like anything new, but this is a cover Nico. So when you rig this up, you're able to rig a Nico rig so it is weedless. So I took one out, I'll show you the rigging. This gentleman right here, Shin Fukai, showed this uh, on the Instagrams. The one thing I noticed different is the way the hook points. So you take this, run it through like so, and you're gonna take this to the end where it's got this hook keeper and pull it through. Once you've got that locked in there like so, mark this off just like you would with the Texas rig. Lays flat on there, you expose it, and there you go. So you've got a weedless Nico rig. Now, like I said, the only difference that I noticed is that the hook point is kind of up this way pointing down. Now, normally when I do a Nico rig, I'll have the hook like that so it's pointed up so as you're popping it it's this deal I don't know how well this will work um, I am interested to give it a try see if I have any sort of different hookup ratio of course you'd have your weight here you would tie to the swivel and it would go across the bottom just like that I don't know also from Gamagatsu I got uh, to do a little bit heavier I guess kind of drop shotting in the cover put your worm on here and it's going to rig it uh, weedless just like you would a regular worm um, for my drop shot game you all know I'm a drop shot master Speaking of drop shots, uh, of course our friend Rich showed these a while ago, you've probably seen them. This is the four inch ballistic net from Arsenal Fishing. Look at this thing, kind of a cool little deal. So I got what color? Temptation they call it, which is that green pumpkin with like the black and blue top. Love the two-tone colors like this. You know, this is one you can throw in your bag and just use anytime you want uh, to fit a number of different uh, occasions or situations, I guess you'd say. Um, so again, a Ned Rig. You put your Ned Rig hook on there. Do I have one? I don't have one handy, but you know what a Ned Rig looks like. Ned Rig it in there. And the big thing with this is as it's bouncing on the bottom, it's got that rib body with a little tantalizing tip of a tail on it doing a whole bunch of action. Cool thing, four inches so it's not super micro finesse, you know, and of course a lot of that, you know, that's the bulk of the body. An inch of that on the end is that little spiky tail, but a lot of movement, good subtle movement. I suppose you could drop shot this as well, would look probably cool. I don't know, neat bait. Let's keep going with the plastics here. Um, some of these I got on sale, I believe these were over at Mystery Tackle Box. They had stuff like dirt cheap. Somebody I think actually sent me one of these packs as well, um, but this is the three and a half inch Adrenaline Bug Jr. in Purple Shadow. Black and purple, I've said I don't know how many times. Works wonders here in the Midwest. Look at that. Oh, golly. 
some of the tiny packet chunks, little two inch, you get seven in there. That's the summer cross. So of course your green pumpkin, kind of that chartreuse belly. Great for some little finesse jigs. Got some of the finesse TRDs from Z-Man, speaking of the Ned Rig, but this is in yoga pants, all black. All black is boring. I, it, I guess it doesn't sell well because it's boring to an angler. You know, everybody's looking for that secret magic color, but an all black works in clear water, dirty water, stained water, doesn't matter water. Black uh, is a great color all around. Speaking of that magical color, I had to get some of these SMH shaking my head worms from Z-Man. This color is called Purple Rain. I don't like Prince's music whatsoever, but uh, the name on this Purple Rain is fitting because it's got this like blue purpley with like a deeper plum purple with a red flake. Uh, Y'all know I am a sucker for purple. So some of these, like I said, with that Nico, oh my gosh. And then also a number of different things here from Big Bite Baits. So first we've got, what do they call this thing? Sensation Smasher 35 Perch Dinner. Winner, winner of Perch Dinner. And this sensation, it stinks. This little flat drop shot lure, and look at the amount of action this thing's gonna have. The head is completely solid. It's got like a flat bottom. It's got some orange, yellowy, green flake in it to mimic that perch. It's got a thin body with like a core there, and then these ribs and this little flat kind of beaver tail that's gonna be flapping. This thing, I guarantee, is gonna have an absolute load uh, of action on a little drop shot. Also, this strange little trailer deal. Now, this thing kind of piqued my interest because, again, with that sensation scent, the Ramtail 35 Black Blue Flake, I can think of a number of things this would be fun for. I mean, you know, a buzz bait, if you wanted to have like a little bit shorter profile, more compact, you could do this on like the back of a frog buzz bait. Pull that apart there so you can see it a little bit better. That's what the feet are. It's like a, you know, a zoom horny toad type deal, you know, with these like pointy kicky feet, Z cross, something like that. Look at these back here, kicking and flopping, uh, swim jig. I don't know if this will work on a chatterbait or not. I have to give it a try. On the back of a regular flipping jig with all sorts of action. I thought of a number of different things for this. Again, the flat bottom, just kind of a cool bait, cool trailer. Uh, I'm gonna give that a go. And last from them, one that I was excited when I saw it come out, this is what they call the quarantine cross. They had worked with, gosh, I forget who it was, uh, during quarantine to do this. Uh, and you can see there, this is the gold, excuse me, green pumpkin, purple copper. I was thinking it was gold something. Uh, but this is why my buddy Brando showed me this color. Lighter brown green pumpkin with that goldish orange flake and then purple flake mixed in. This little quarantine craw has these little tiny craw trailer uh, appendage feet flapper deals on back. Um, I was thinking this thing on like a little bit bigger Ned rig setup. I suppose you could Nico rig it. You could probably wacky rig this thing. The back of a chatterbait trailer. I thought of a number of different things for this. Kind of that smaller, more finesse type deal to it. Uh, I suppose you could even you know, uh, drop shot it if you wanted, but a bunch of different things I think you can do with this one. Just kind of a cool, neat little bait, uh, that stick bait with the cross stuff on the end. Also got that in the tried and true black and blue. And then their tilapia color, which is like a darker green pumpkin with purple, blue, green, all kinds of different flake in it. Okay, rounding out the end of the box here, we've got some hard baits. This was another newer one that came out. If you like to throw crankbaits uh, in and amongst the wood, uh, Spro's got you covered with this one, the Speed Demon 55. You can see there it says it has a responsive hard action during retrieve, excellent castability, weighing three eighths of an ounce, and a tight wiggle. So kind of supposed to be like that balsa-ish deal. It's got the uh, circuit board lip. It does come with a snap on the front, which is nice to give it an extra big range of movement in there. And again, the thing with some of these uh, crankbaits, like a, you know balsa and stuff like that, is once you get them into cover, you'll hear people talk about like weaving them through and backing them out. A balsa bait or one that's really highly buoyant, as soon as it hits something and you stop, it will kind of back up and float. So that's one thing that um, I know some people will kind of get in and amongst wood and they just keep grinding. But if you're going, you feel you hit something big, just give it a stop and a lot of times it will back right out. So this will be an interesting one to fish aggressive. Perfect for a lot of bank fishing, three to five feet diving on there. Um, you can really burn it and not have it blow out. Meant to be fished fast and aggressive around wood. That is the laundry matte color. Oh, it's like a silver black back. The brown bug color, good spring one. Old school shads like your pearl silver back. I like the uh, the accents of the orange and reddish. Apparently I'm colorblind, that's like a pinkish reddish. And then the Delta Red Craw. I had a lot of, uh, I guess, brown and orange spring thoughts when I ordered. Okay, now one that wound up being essentially a direct competitor to that, the Rocco 5s. This is one from uh, Rapala that is a ball. So that OG Ots Garage series. Love theirs. You know, you think of the DT series last year. They came out with, what's it called? Oh, what is it? The OG 6, whatever, the, the flat set of crankbait, and they came out with the tiny 4. 
Well, that's great for those colder water temperatures, that flat sided, you can see it had like a rounded bill. This one though, when they changed it, they went to that circuit board lip that is a true square bill. So again, this, this circuit board white lip stuff holds up a little bit better, nice and light. And you can see there goes right into that bait, kind of tapers back in. Meant to be fished a little bit more aggressive around wooden stuff. Um, it's not quite a flat body, it kind of tapers rounded. So it's kind of a mix between like your, you know, regular crankbait and a flat sided. Interesting bait overall. And this is one of my favorite colors that they do in this. Just the old boring silver color. But again, it's that silver kind of pearl black back with that foil on it. Um, love that. Again, balsa action. So it's going to be extremely buoyant. Dives to five feet. Hence the uh, the garage, Ots Garage OG5 there. Um, but overall, a cool bait. So when the water warms up a little bit uh, past spring, you know, past that flat sided crank season, this will be a good one. Also got the Citrus Shad. Dark Brown Crawdad. Green Gizzard Shad, another favorite of mine. And Chartreuse Black, kind of a little bit spin on your Chartreuse Black back. It's got some kind of silver scales and uh, orange there, but overall great looking bait. Sticking with some hard baits, we got this one, the Hybrid Hunter from Striking. Now they had a, a larger one. I never got any, had multiple people ask me if I fished it, what I thought about it, number of videos and stuff. This one they came out with new for iCast and it's just a different uh, size. It's the Hybrid Hunter Shallow Junior. So for us bank anglers, perfect, only dives one to three feet floating with a rattle. You can see their good loud kind of knocking rattle. You can see what makes this uh, interesting is the shape of this bill and it's supposed to come through grass uh, a lot better than other crankbaits. And it also gives it this weird like wobbly, kicky, like as it hits off things and bounce off of them, this weird like hunting action to it. So uh, I'm interested to see how this does. I was not really hyped to get the bigger one. Um, a lot of people asked me about it. So like I said, when I saw the smaller size coming out, uh, one to three feet, I thought, you know what, that'll be good for the ponds and lakes and stuff around here, a little bit smaller. So we'll give that a go. What color is this? Chrome blue back. Also got that in the oyster color, you know, for the shad spawn, white oysterish. And the gold black back, uh, dirtier water, a little bit stained to it when it's sunny out. Um, I like throwing gold over silver. Usually I go to a silver when it's cleaner, um, clearer, a little bit water. Um, but gold when it's got stain to it, love it. Did you guess it? Did you know what it was going to be? Jerk baits. I grabbed a couple of these. These are kind of expensive, man. I don't like to spend a ton of money on jerk baits. Um, I finally found like the, you know, people were saying the Mega Bass, uh, the Vision 110, so good, but I wasn't going to pay 25 bucks. Um, I got some for sale from Japan Lure Shop, I think. I don't know, for like nine, 10 bucks or something. These, it's the KVD Elite 300. So it's a four to seven foot diver half ounce and I like that you know getting down to that kind of seven foot having a little bit bigger option um, I've got a number of jerk baits that are a little bit smaller so just a little bit larger size it's got the three treble hooks on it you know when you're trying to power fish this a little bit more you know maybe even weed out some of those smaller fish it does have if we can focus there the oval ring uh, on the front of it again for a bunch of good movement but just a little bit bigger jerk bait we'll see how this one goes uh, I haven't fished a ton of the strike kings I've got some of the older smaller ones I don't remember if they're the KVD or not but Cool looking bait. And then also had to get one of those in the shizzle color. Uh, I did grab one for Dizzle because he loves the shizzle. Um, and this color reminded me of the ghost minnow that Lucky Craft does. Lucky Craft pointer in the ghost minnow. I've taught a, caught a ton of fish on. So almost like a rainbowy trout ghost minnow look to it. But that's everything in the box. Let's close it out. All right, fishing friends, do me a favor. Comment below and let me know out of all this stuff, what are you the most excited to see? I'm not gonna lie, I wanna try this thing. Like I said, maybe it's a gimmick, maybe it's dumb and it's not gonna catch any fish, but uh, I wanna give it a go. Maybe you're a crankbait guy, I wanna see this uh, Rocco 5. That'll be a good one late spring. Or if you love top water, how about one of these coveted Rico poppers? Whatever it is, comment below and let me know. Now I gotta say, Dave Washburn, uh, subscribe fish and friend of the day, always watching and supporting, I appreciate you. Again, everybody else who continues to watch this crazy channel of mine, uh, I can't believe we've got as many people as we do watching uh, on the live Saturday night. If you're new to the channel, uh, I do a live every Saturday night uh, and have fun, sometimes guests, sometimes just shenanigans, but I don't know. Uh, more videos this week be on the lookout i want to spoil you guys i'm going to get three out this week if not hold me to it and i'm giving away all my fishing stuff so that's enough for me thank you all for watching and until next time